If you're rebuked, that is the word of God. But I'm not preaching this because I want to rebuke anyone here or uh, I'm sure that uh, there are people who will, some of uh, peop the people who are watching for solely for to find something wrong uh, will uh, say that, oh, uh, Preacher Jong is, even Preacher Jong is going against uh, what his father is doing today. No, that is not my uh, desire. My desire is first and foremost to be an encouragement uh, to my dad, to everyone here in the church, to the leaders of the church, to me personally, and that uh, we would be guided by the wisdom of God, by the word of God. Po. And uh, sana po, hindi mami's interpret yung message because uh, lately, na pagkamalan po akong may bagong motor. Eh, kaya po nag kaya po talaga lagi may disclaimer. Kasi hindi po sa akin yung pinopost ko po. Ano? Okay, so dito po sa 1 Samuel chapter 18. Uh, makita po natin dito, uh, this is about David. And uh, even the, the chapters previous to this, and the chapters, more chapters after this will be about David. And uh, how the Lord used him, how the Lord worked in his life, how the Lord uh, guided him. And that we see that in the Bible, many times, Old Testament to the New Testament, the Lord allows the writers to write uh, um, uh, one sentence or one word or a phrase to describe a person, to give us people today who are reading uh, a glimpse of the character of these people. Sa, uh, sa Old Testament, we, we know that Abraham is described as, uh, 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 he is always connected to faith, the father of faith. We know that um, uh, we saw that Moses is the friend of God. So just because of those descriptions, we can see what kind of person they are. How, uh, what is their relationship with God? Um, in the New Testament, the writers of the New Testament always describe themselves to be servants of God. And that means that tells us that these people are living their lives, serving the Lord and doing whatever the Lord wants them to do. And even Paul uh, uh, one time described himself as a prisoner of the Lord Jesus Christ, that, uh, which tells us that Paul, whatever happens to him, though uh, he, uh, those circumstances, him being in prison a couple of times and, and uh, eventually ended up uh, being killed, um, to him, all of these things that are happening to me is because of God's decree, it is his will, and I am okay with it. So here, we look at David, and we all know what kind of description the Bible gave him. If I would ask everyone, I'm sure everyone knows that David was described at, to be a man after God's own heart. And I'm not going to focus on that today. We'll focus on the, the, the story at chapter 18. But as, a, as, a, as an uh, introduction, David was described as a man after God's own heart. And it is something to me, it's very interesting that God allowed the writer to write this description of David being God, a man after God's own heart after his sin with Bathsheba. And... Um, we see that the, only, the, reason, the reason why uh, David was called a man after God's own heart simply is because he, his heart uh, is aligned with God's heart. It means that whatever God wants, David wants. Whatever God desires, David desires. And all, uh, in David's life, he is all about fulfilling what God wants him to fulfill in his life. Whatever makes the heart of God beat, it is what is making the heart of David beat. So he is that man after God's own heart. Even after his sin, even after his failure, he is after, uh, uh, he, he will, he, remember in uh, one of his Psalm, he said that, Lord, uh, create in me a, 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 a clean heart, renew a right spirit within me. He's, it's, he's always about his heart. So I fell, I did something, but I will stand up and continue for the Lord. And, and though uh, he committed this, uh, uh, whatever, of course, we should consider is a great sin, not only adul adultery, but as well as murder, God still called him after that to be a man after God's own heart. Of course, I'm not saying that he escaped the punishment of those things. Why? Because in 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 10 to 12, let's read this very quickly. The Bible says, after all these things that he did with Bathsheba and uh, Bathsheba's uh, husband, Now therefore the sword shall never depart from thy house, because thou hast despised me, and hast taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be thy wife. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will raise up evil against thee out of thine own house, and I will take thy wives before thine eyes, and give them unto thy neighbor, and he shall lie with thy wives in the sight of the son. For thou didst it secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel and before the son. So a lot of uh, pastors or uh, preachers preach about this um, as if 
uh, in the way they preach and, and, and they talk about David being man after God's own heart, the way they do that, it seems to me that they're saying that David escaped the punishment of God. No, the Bible's clear. Whatever we sow, we will reap. And God will always punish sin. So though David uh, still... Uh, God still saw David uh, fit or, or, or deemed him uh, worthy to still be used by him, God gave him uh, a punishment for his sin. And we all know what happened to the uh, 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 family of David. Even his own son tried to take the kingdom from him and trying to kill him. And he had to hide in, in a cave uh, just uh, 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 from his very own son. So the, all of these are, are the consequences of sin. But though David committed this uh, great sin, and I don't think uh, many of us here uh, will, 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 will uh, commit this in man's eyes, great sin, but God still deemed him worthy to be used and be, even be described as a man after God's own heart. And I can see here, just like the message last uh, Wednesday, the grace of God. The grace of God in the life of David, the grace of God in the lives of people here in the Bible. Now, when we talk about David, he's really known about uh, for two things. When I, say, uh, when I say David and, there are only two possible answers you can give me. It's either David and Goliath or David and Bathsheba. Because really, people are known for their greatest success or their greatest failure. If I tell you uh, uh, an, a name right now, whatever pops into your mind is their greatest success or their greatest failure. That is how people remember. So whenever we talk about David, we remember him for his greatest failure, which is Bathsheba. And, and, and the way that he schemed to kill uh, for, for, for uh, Uriah uh, to be killed. But we can also remember, when, I, when we say David, especially for the kids, what they remember is David and Goliath. Because through David, a man after God's own heart, a man who was willing to be used by God, he was able to kill a giant named Goliath. A giant who was mocking uh, the, the country of Israel. A giant who is mocking the name of God, ultimately mocking the name of God. That's why David said, why are you allowing this guy to mock us? He is mocking not us, not me, not you, King Saul, but but the God who we serve. So through his courage, because, uh, because uh, he's uh, willing to be used by God, because he doesn't want anyone to be mocking God, because he wants God to be glorified, he was able to be used by God to kill this mighty man named Goliath. But that is chapter 17. We're here at chapter 18, which is where we're going to pick up uh, the story. After this great victory over Goliath, I believe that it was not even David's greatest battle. It was not even, the, Goliath was not even the most difficult enemy David had to face. It was this guy named Saul. A guy who was supposed to be on his side. A guy who was supposed to be uh, um, helping him. A guy who was supposed to be preparing him to be uh, the next king of Israel. And that's what we're going to look at in this chapter. So let us go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning even for the words that we have heard already, for the, uh, the songs that we have heard, the encouragements in the lyrics of those songs. I thank you, Lord, even for uh, the people that you have brought here this morning. I pray that you work mightily in our midst. I pray that you use this message, Lord, to be an encouragement to everyone. I pray, Lord, that if uh, this message will contain rebuke, I pray, Lord, that we accept it humbly and we realize the authority of the Word of God, that no matter what our... Uh, um, mindset is, no matter what we believe in, if it does not um, uh, agree with the Word of God, that it is not your will for our lives. I pray, Lord, that if there's, uh, th there are those things that we're going to hear today, I pray that we'll humble, uh, humble ourselves and that we will submit to your uh, authority, dear Lord. I pray that you use me um, as, as you use this message to be a great blessing to me an encouragement and a rebuke to me. I pray that you use it the same way to the people who will be uh, uh, hearing the message. I pray that you, the Holy Spirit will be work uh, might, uh, mightily, freely in our midst and that uh, we will open our hearts and listen. Not only listen to hear, Lord, but uh, listen and, or, or hear these words with the intentions of obeying you, dear Lord, and uh, glorifying your name. For all these things, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So, here in this uh, chapter 18, uh, I'm sure that a lot of you are familiar with the story. Not as familiar as chapter 17, I'm sure. But a lot of us are familiar with what is happening here in chapter 18. We see uh, five different uh, events here in chapter 18. First, we read uh, in, verses, uh, in the first verses about Jonathan and David. 
And uh, I'm not going to focus a lot there, but we're going to look at their relationship uh, for the sake of what the world is uh, celebrating today. Uh, after that scene, we see that um, uh, people, or women to be exact, uh, came to greet Saul and to sing songs for him. Not only for him, but for David. And an another scene that we saw a while ago was David and Saul by themselves. And this is where the famous uh, javelin throw was, uh, was uh, mentioned. And, and I'm sure that you know about that. Twice did, uh, did Saul try to uh, kill David or intended to kill David. And the next scene after that was Saul wanting to give Mirab or his, his eldest daughter to David. And remember that in the previous chapter, Saul already promised Mirab to David. He said, when, when, uh, when Goliath was there for 40 days mocking Israel, anyone come, uh, come and uh, fight me? Um, Saul said, if anyone is brave enough to fight that guy and defeat him, I will give him his, my daughter, my oldest daughter. But David did that and we can see here that Saul hasn't given, uh, uh, fulfilled his promise to David. After that, we see a, uh, another scene in chapter, uh, here in this chapter, that a similar one to the previous one, but not his eldest daughter. Saul is giving his daughter named Michael to David. So that's what we're going to look at. These are the events uh, that we're going to look at. And if, I'm sure you're familiar with it. If not, you have your Bibles with you. You can, uh, you can uh, look at that again. But what we will focus on here is the relationship of David and Saul, or, or the relationship of Saul, what is uh, David to Saul, and what is Saul to David. Uh, but before that, we're going to look at briefly David and Jonathan, and David and Michael. So, first here, let's look at the beginning of the chapter. It says here, uh, the relationship between David and Jonathan. Because before David has to face Saul, uh, 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 all the things that Saul is going to do against him, all the things that Saul is going to scheme against David, all the things, all the plans that Saul will try to uh, make in order to get rid of David. And, and we, ha we have to realize that this battle is, will go on for 20 long years. And uh, when, when David faced Goliath, it was just a brief moment. But when, but when David uh, was fighting against Saul and Saul considered David as his enemy, there's that, uh, uh, things that Saul did against David for very, uh, for very long time, for 20 years. And this battle, as I have said, is more dangerous than when he faced Goliath. This battle did more uh, um, damage to David than Goliath did. Why? Because Goliath didn't even get a chance to take a shot at David. Remember that even before Goliath was able to do something, David already killed him. Tapos agad. But Saul, at, he, at least in this chapter, he, he had two shots at David. And this is a more dangerous battle, but this, this is a, a, a battle that will, will, will do more damage to David. But what I want us to see here is, before this battle even began, God gave a relationship to David. And that is the relationship of David and Jonathan. And we see here that in verse number 1, it says here, And it came to pass, when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul, that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David. So let's look at that. That the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David. And Jonathan loved him as his own soul. So we can see here that there was a connection between David and Jonathan. Um, remember in... Uh, we're going to, we're going to uh, look at that later. But this is not something that David sought. David wasn't looking for a friend. Jonathan wasn't also purposely looking for a friend. But uh, somehow, God was working in order to bring these two people together. And if, even in our lives, the friends that we have, or the closest friends that we have, are the, the friends that we have a lot in common with. Uh, uh, we have a lot of common with them. We, we don't usually uh, get along with people that we don't have a lot of common uh, a lot of things in common. Kami, uh, us uh, men here, we get along with each other. Uh, at, I think first is, nung dumating dito si Kuerlison, nung dumating si Kuer Gomer, ang unang aya, basketball. Right, we, that is something we have in common. That uh, every time we come together, there's always going to be a basketball topic. Uh, so I don't know about you, but uh, those who love ukay ukay, that is something you have in common. You always go and have fellowship, buying stuff, about shopping, or uh, just uh, for the sake of uh, being able to buy something cheap. And uh, yung ating, yung, yun yung gusto nila, yun yung, that's their love. And, and we, we usually naturally migrate with, with people who ha we have in common. And Jonathan and David has at least their love for the Lord in common. We saw Jonathan's uh, story was, uh, 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 he also had that love for the Lord. Not only that, but they had the courage to defend the things of God. Remember in chapter 
uh, uh, 14, 15, something like that, when Jonathan was, was the one who attacked the garrison of, of the Philistines, and, and, and he's the one who bravely, courageously de uh, defeated or, or killed a lot of these people who, or, did, or, or made a way in order for, for God's people to win. David did the same thing. And all of the things that we saw with David, all of the qualities that we see in David, Jonathan had that as well. And what happened in the previous chapter, 1 Samuel 17, verse 57, um, and 57 and 58, the Bible says here, After the battle with Goliath, after David killed Goliath, and David returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, Abner took him, and brought him before Saul with the head of the Philistine in his hand. And Saul said unto him, Whose son art thou, thou young man? And David answered, I am the son of thy servant Jesse the Bethlehemite. And go to chapter 18, verse 1. And it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking. So, so Saul and David were talking after the battle, but they're not talking alone. Jonathan was there overhearing the conversation. And, and apparently after this conversation, Jonathan realized, I like this guy. Yeah, after the conversation, the Bible says, the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David. We have a lot, of, a lot in common. This guy is courageous. This guy loves the Lord. I want to be his friend. So God brought these two people together in order for, uh, uh, for Jonathan to be a help to David uh, because of the battles that, he will, that, that, that they will be facing ahead. Not only was there a connection with them, but we see here that there was also a covenant, uh, a relationship a godly or, or a biblical relationship should always have a covenant. That is what we uh, uh, have in our marriages. And during the Old Testament, uh, when, whenever two people will enter into a covenant, whether that, uh, if that is a, a friendship covenant, they would be uh, giving an animal sacrifice. But before burning that animal, they will cut that animal in half and put one animal on one side, another one on, on another side. And the two or, or the parties that will make the covenant will walk in the midst of those animals signifying that only death will be the end of our covenant. That is, what, uh, that is the covenant that Jonathan had with David. And, and may I remind us that this is also a, uh, a, a picture of, of, of a great relationship, picture of a person who, or, or two people who loved each other, two people who are committed to each other, two people who God, in His will, in His uh, providence, put together so that someday they can rely upon each other. And I'm sure that as I'm saying this, you, there are people that comes into your mind. People that God placed in your life in order uh, to be there when you, when you need them the most. Not only that, but Jonathan, we read a while ago that he gave his robe to David. So this is not only a covenant, but this was as well a commitment to David. He had a commitment with David. He gave his robe to David. What kind of robe is this? Jonathan, remember, was the prince. He's the son of the king. This was the robe that uh, uh, the next king is supposed to be wearing. But Jonathan says, I should not be wearing this. This should be yours, David. I'm sure that the reason why Jonathan did this, I'm sure he knows that uh, David was already uh, uh, anointed previously by Samuel to be the next king. Why? Because we saw, if you are familiar with that story, we saw that when Samuel came to pangalan ng tatay, uh, Jesse, that when, when, when Samuel said that I will, um, among your kids, I will choose a king, Jesse made a feast. So all the elders and people in that village were together and they're uh, 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 excitedly waiting on who uh, will be chosen to be the next king. So, so the person that was chosen there, uh, we all know the story eventually, was David, the, la the last kid uh, to show up, the last kid to be presented uh, uh, to the prophet. So, uh, so he, uh, everyone saw that. I'm sure that um, everyone in the country knows about that as well. His, his uh, brothers know that. The people in their village know that. People talk. Jonathan knows that. So he says, this doesn't belong to me. It's yours. My robe is yours. Not only that, but he also gave his sword to David. We remember in the, in the story of uh, Jonathan and, and the way he, he attacked the garrison of the Philistines, that not everyone during this time had a sword. And this was a very prized possession. Not only did he give his uh, robe to David, but he gave his sword to David as well. And, 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 and the last thing that he gave to David was his bow. Okay, so all of these things, he was really committed to David. I found someone who loves the Lord as much as I do. I found someone who had courage for the Lord, as much courage as I have. And I'm going to be committed to you. And we're going to enter into, an, in, uh, into a covenant. What a great relationship. This is not even the relationship of a husband and wife. These are friends. Friends who just have that common love for the Lord. Who is that in your life? 
Sino po yan sa buhay natin? And, and, as, and, and I want us to see that this is a great picture as well of our relationship with God. Our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, God gave Jonathan to David before he faced this great battle for 20 years. But, uh, but, but uh, us, uh, we, when we entered our relationship with the Lord, it is God who entered into covenant with us. It is God who entered into a commit with, commitment with us. It is God who gave us, who identifies with us. It is Christ who gave us His robe of righteousness. It is Christ who even said that not even death will separate us. From the love of God. And, and, and that Christ has equipped us to face the battles that we're going to be facing in our lives. When we got saved, the, the, the Bible says in the New Testament over and over again, you're going to face tribulations, persecutions, but God, before we even face that, Christ has entered into covenant with us, selling, telling us, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And that whatever you need, when, when you're in the midst of that trial, when you're in the midst of that battle, I am going to be there. My grace is going to be enough for you. That is my covenant with you. So look at the and, and that is what uh, uh, they, Jonathan is to David. It is a very strategic relationship. Ang ganda po ng plano ng Panginoon. Bago, alam na, God knows everything. God knows uh, what Saul is going to do with David. So, so God said, okay, I'm going to give you someone you can rely on. I'm going to give you Jonathan. But not only Jonathan, but towards the end of the chapter, the Lord gave someone else to David, and that, uh, that is the, uh, a woman by the name of Michael. And, and I'm, sure you, I'm sure you see the sense of humor that God has. All of these two people are children of Saul. It is as if uh, God is telling Saul, Saul, you have to realize you're wrong. Even your own kids love David. And why are you doing this to David? So God gave two uh, um, uh, strategic relationship to David, a friend by the name of Jonathan and a wife by the name of Michael, whose heart, we, know, we all know the story, God uh, 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 moved through the heart of Michael as well. There are also negative things that Michael did, and uh, it's controversial. We'll not go to that. It's another topic for another time. But at least God used Michael to save, uh, one time to save David out of the hands of Saul. Parang yung story din ni Rahab, nung hinahanap ni Saul si uh, David, Michael was, uh, Michael was the one God used in order to save David. So God gave uh, a, a woman who loved David, the Bible says. She loved David. Uh, while, looking at, uh, while looking at all of these uh, things that are, are happening, Saul telling David, I'm going to give you my oldest daughter, Mike, uh, uh, anong pangalan? Um, Mir, ano? Miram. Okay, I'm going to give you my oldest daughter, but then I don't give it to you. I gave her to someone else. But all of this time, there was a woman looking and say, uh, I, I love David. I want to be the one uh, to be the wife of David. Gusto ko ako. Ako yung mapapangasawa. And, and this is someone who God gave as well to David in order para, para uh, matulungan din si David sa kanyang mga pagdadaanan. And uh, if we see Jonathan as a picture of our relationship with Christ, let's look at Michael as a picture of our God-given human relationships. Because it is a great thing that Christ is always with us. It is a great thing that no matter what happens, whatever storm comes by, Christ is there with us. But it is a blessed thing if there's someone else there with us. Uh, if, if, there is, uh, if you have a wife, if you have a husband, if you have kids, if you have sisters and brothers who will be there with you, you can rely on them. Whatever happens, they know you, they'll be there, they'll stand by your side. It's a great blessing. Nandiyan lang ang Panginoon, nagbigay pa siya ng mga tao na makakatulong po natin. So God was doing this to David. Uh, you're going to face a battle. Saul is going to try to kill you. Saul is going to do this. He's going to make sure that your name will be stained. He's, he's going to make sure that people will think that you are someone who's rebellious. But I will give you two people, at least two people, that will be there for you and will help you will be there by your side. And that is David and Michael. Why did David need uh, Jonathan and Michael. Why did David need Jonathan and Michael? Because if you look at the next chapter, the women aren't singing anymore. There, there aren't those songs being sang about David anymore. Uh, David wasn't uh, in the house of Saul serving him anymore. There's no more favor. Wala na pong, uh, wala na pong uh, pabor na binibigay si Saul. Bakit? Galit na talaga siya. So David is now in the next chapter a fugitive of the of justice, a fugitive of uh, 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 the, the, the land of Israel. But before that even happens, God already gave him Jonathan and Michael. Aren't you glad for the people that God placed in your life? Hindi po ba tayo 
uh, thankful that God has given us friends in the ministry. Hindi ba tayo thankful that God has given you if you have a wife? A wife. Kung single ka, bahalak sa buhay mo. But, or God has given you a, a, a husband. And someday, God will give you someone that will be there with you no matter what happens. That will be there with you. You'll be able to rely on them. Christ is going to be there. God is going to be there. But praise the Lord that there are others who are there as well. So, God gave this our uh, relationships. And we're going to look at the last uh, relationship here, David and Saul. And this is where we're going to focus uh, uh, on. So, this is the battle. David versus Saul. David will be facing this battle for many years. As I have said a while ago, it is uh, 20 years. A, a, a giant who may not be, uh, physically speaking, bigger than Goliath, but this guy did uh, uh, bigger things against David, and, and, and the battle is much longer than the one he had uh, with Goliath. This is not a battle that uh, David has to fight with swords or, 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 or whatever, because remember, one time David had a chance to kill this guy, but he didn't. He knows that this battle is not about that. This is a battle against evil, against a person who lies, against a person who manipulates people, uh, against you, against a person who schemes, uh, who does a lot of plans against you in order to get rid of you. That is the battle he's facing. And that is a much more dangerous battle than the one he had against uh, um, Goliath. Let's look at a few verses here and let's look at uh, the relationship of David and Saul. Verse number 5, it says here, and David went out, we're, we're looking at David first, whithersoever Saul sent him, and he behaved himself wisely. And Saul sent him over uh, the man of war, and he was accepted in the sight of all people, and also in the sight of Saul's servants. So David here, while all of this is are happening, the Bible says David was behaving himself wisely. David was making all the good and right choices. Verse number 14. And David behaved himself wisely in all his ways, and the Lord was with him. Verse number 15 says, Wherefore, when Saul saw that he behaved himself very wisely, and he was afraid of him. Verse number 30 says, Then the princes of the uh, Philistines and, uh, went forth, and it came to pass, and they went forth, that David behaved himself more wisely than all the servants of Saul, so that his name was much set by. Four times in this chapter, uh, in, this, in, in this one chapter, did the Bible say that David was making all the wise and right decisions in his life. All of these things. Let's look at Saul. Verse number 11 and 12. And Saul cast a javelin, for he said, I will smite David, even to the wall with it. And David avoided out of his presence twice. And it's in the Bible, verse 12, And Saul was afraid of David. Saul, was a, Saul who is the king. Saul who commands the armies of Israel. Saul or David who did nothing to make uh, uh, Saul afraid, yet Saul was afraid. The Bible says, Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him and was departed from Saul. So we can more understand this word afraid uh, better by the word intimidated or, or insecure. Parabang, I don't feel safe around David anymore. Why? Because of how he, how he uh, uh, makes his decisions. Because the Lord is clear with him, not with me. Verse number 15. Wherefore, when Saul saw that he behaved himself wisely, he was afraid of him. There it is again, verse 29. And Saul was yet the more afraid of David, and Saul became David's enemy continually. We have here two people, one named David, who's making all the right choices, who's filled with love for God, who's filled with the Spirit of God. He's making right choice after right choice. Was David a good, was he in a good circumstance? No. Was David being manipulated? Yes, he is. Was he being lied about? Yes, he was. Is he the object of the of evil plans of Saul? Yes, he was. And yet the Bible says he was behaving himself wisely. You know what that, you know what that tells me? It tells me that we don't need to be in a good, good circumstance to make right decisions. We don't need to be in the right kind of circumstance to be able to, right, to make the right kind of decision for God. Actually, in fact, uh, we are commanded to ask wisdom from God to make the right decision in the midst of trials and temptations. That is where we are mostly commanded to ask wisdom. James 1, 5 says, if any of you lack wisdom, what is the context of this? It's the context of trials, testings. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Give it to all men liberally, and it prayeth not, and it shall be given him. Why? Because it is in the midst of difficult trials and testings that we are prone to make the bad decisions. 
That's why that's when we need the wisdom of God. Kay pagka masarap ang buhay, ang dali lang pong gumawa ng desisyon na tama. Kasi okay eh. Pero pag in the midst of all these trials, testings, that is the, when it's, it's easiest to make the wrong decisions. David could just say, Lord, the, sayo na yung kingdom. I don't want to face this battle. Uwi na lang ako. Just go back. Take care of my sheep. Of the sheep. Help my father. Help my brothers. I don't like this. I'm, I'm going to get killed by this guy. He's the king of Israel. I'm going to get killed. Him. But the Bible says he made the wise decision. Why? Because the wisdom of God is in him. Ano po ba ang ibig sabihin ng wisdom of God? Simply means that uh, uh, the point of view ng ating Panginoon. That means, in the midst of trials, when you're surrounded by these bad things happening around you, left and right, uh, wala ka mapuputahan, all bad situations, you cannot see God's point of view. All you see is the bad situation. But if you ask wisdom from God, God will help you to see your circumstance and difficulties the way He sees them. Kaya nga po, we can make the right decisions in the midst of all these things. Why? Because God will help us do that. And David, the Bible says, God was with him. He's filled with the Spirit of God. He is uh, filled or motivated by his love for God. That's why in the midst of all of these things, again and again, the Bible says, right decision. Behave himself wisely. Behave himself very wisely. Behave himself more wisely than all the servants of Saul. Yeah, Apo, we don't need to be in the right circumstance to make wise decisions. We can always make, make wise decisions when we are uh, um, filled with the wisdom of God. Not only that, we saw David, but we see Saul on the other hand who is afraid, so afraid or so insecure about David. The Bible says in Proverbs 28, 1, The wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. So fear and courage is not a, a matter of, of what you have or don't have. Fear and courage is a matter of who you know. Kaya nga po kung tao ka na walang Panginoon, insecure ka. Kung tao ka na wala sa Panginoon, you're going to be intimidated by everything. You're going to be by afraid by even the little trials that, that will come your life. But if you are uh, with God, you're doing the will of God, you're following the Lord, you're going to be bold as a lion. You're going to be courageous to make decisions. Why? We see here that Saul, his relationship with God, sirana. Why? Because of his disobedience. Time after time, God gave Saul instructions. Time after time, Saul said no to God. I'll do it my own way. And he knows that his relationship with God, wala na. Tapos na. And at the same time, he sees David. Oh, God's spirit is with that guy. God is with that guy. I don't feel safe around him. I don't want that guy around me anymore. Yun ang sinasabi ni Saul. Now, what are we going to, uh, uh, let's look at some principles here in the uh, actions of Saul, his attitude, his character, because maybe merong soul, soul sa atin dito. And, and, and I just want to say, not, not to rebuke anyone, I just want to say that all of us has, have a little bit of soul in us. Uh, meron talaga sa atin, we're not perfect as uh, preacher Alex always say, but there's always a little bit of soul in you and me. A little bit of insecurity. A little bit of fear. A little bit of, I know that this is not the will of God and I'm doing it and I know that the Lord's not going to lead me here. A little bit of that. So let's look, how does this insecurity, how does this uh, uh, um, fear uh, uh, affected, how did it affect Saul? The Bible says in verse 12, go, going back to that, and Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him. So it's the Bible the reason. Why is he insecure with David? Why is he intimidated? Why is he afraid? Because the Lord was with him and was departed from Saul. So insecurity really is tied to our, uh, our relationship with God. Security or insecurity depends on your relationship with God. When you know you're right with God, you're going to be courageous. When you know you're not right with God, there's not going to be any courage sa buhay mo to make the right decision. Is there someone na kilala ko? Baka ikaw, you're behaving irrationally, you're, you're behaving uh, 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 in, in, a, in a way na hindi naman talaga ganyan, dapat ang ginagawa ng, ng mana ng palataya, or, or maybe you are a, a victim of someone uh, who is like Saul in your life, are you being, uh, are you being gossiped about, are you being destroyed, are, are people making uh, plots and schemes against you, just remember that these people are people who are insecure, because they don't have the right relationship with God. They don't have that, why? Because Saul has lost it. Again and again, he disobeyed God. Again and again, over and over again, he said, No, Lord, that's not the way I'm going to do it. I have my own way. No, Lord, I cannot fight that uh, guy. I don't trust that you're going to do that for me. 
That is all. And we see that his fear, his insecurity was tied with that relationship he has with God. Kaya nga po sa panahon ngayon, those people who look on the outside, independent, they look big, they look like they're strong, these people are not people who are courageous for God. These uh, most of the time, these are the uh, 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 insecure people. Remember, uh, uh, just a few chapters before this, when, when uh, uh, they're looking for, uh, when Samuel was looking for uh, someone to anoint as king, he, he wrongly chose the, the, the strong guy, he wrongly chose the guy who looks good on the outside, and, and, but, but, but uh, uh, God told him that he chose someone who is good on the inside. Well, because, because people can easily show uh, uh, this uh, uh, charade of uh, strength. This, I'm independent. I'm my own man. I make my own decisions. I don't need God. You know, these people are the most insecure people. These are people like uh, Pol Pot or, or, or Hitler or these people who had to, who had to, uh, uh, para bang, pag mayabang or, 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 ano ba yung sa English? Flex modern English, uh, who had to flaunt their own uh, strengths, their own accomplishment. When I have to say it over and over again in front of you, that means I'm insecure. Kasi kailangan ko pang paalala sa inyo. But you know, people who are, who, who are uh, confident are people who are following the Lord. You want to be confident in your decision making? Follow the Lord. You want to be confident uh, uh, in the things that you do in life? Uh, you have to just love, fall in love with the Lord and follow Him. And if we are doing that, we're going to go through life with confidence that whatever decision we make, it is the decision that God wants us to make. That is David. He's a man after God's own heart. He's a man after the things of God. He's a man who only wants the things of God. That's why he's confident that the decisions I make are going to be the decisions that God wanted me to make. But Saul is not like that. He's insecure. Why? He's afraid. Why? Because he knows the Lord is not with him anymore. Sira na yung relationship niya sa Panginoon. Para lang yan sa, sa pamilya. Pag hindi ayos ang relasyon uh, uh, ng inyong pamilya, you will never ask for favors or anything. Right? Uh, uh, if, if I know that I played basketball too long, uh, one day when I arrive home, I will never ask my wife to make coffee for me. Because I know she's not happy with me. Right? If your uh, there's something there, you're not, going to, you're not going to be confident in asking favors. Right? If, if I know that my relationship when I was a kid with, with, with my mom and dad is not okay and I'm being a disobedient child, I will not ask for anything. Right? Now I know that my relationship with them is great. That's why I can ask for something. Uh, for those who weren't able to get it, it needs context. But I will not uh, reiterate it. So not only that, but we see in verse number 6 and 7, And it came to pass as they came, when David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistines, and that women came out of all the cities of Israel, singing and dancing to meet who? Saul. Okay, now David, to meet Saul, with tabrets, with joy, and with instruments of music. And the women answered one, an one, uh, <coughs> answered one another as they played, and said, Saul hath slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands. And this made Saul, we know that this made him mad. Because really, insecurity in your life or, or, or fear in your life, or if you don't have that right relationship with God, it is motivated or it is more amplified by your desire for people's approval. If you live your life trying to get everyone's approval, you're going to live a roller coaster kind of life. Kind of life that is not, it's not, it's not going to make you happy. Because people have their own different opinions. And, and look, look at this song. Sabe, Saul had slain his thousands. And even that is not true. If, if, this, uh, if this talks about the, the battle previously, Saul didn't kill his thousands. And, and even go back, uh, uh, go back even further, it was Jonathan who did something to, 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 to defeat the Philistines. It was David who did something in order to win against the Philistines. It was not Saul. So, kung ako si Saul, masaya na ako dito. Bakit? Hindi naman totoo, pero sabi nila, okay na, tanggap ko na. I didn't kill, I didn't kill thousands, but they're singing that. We see that this song is full of uh, exaggeration. But, it's not, that's not the point. Uh, but not only that, but they, they said that Saul killed his thousands and David slain his ten thousands. I don't know if David has already killed 10,000s here, but if you just look, if this again is talking about the previous battle, it, he only killed one guy. And, and albeit it led to the Philistines being defeated, but again, that's not the point. The point here is that 
in the next verse, Saul was very wroth. Why? Because a person who is insecure doesn't, is not content with people's praise for them, but they want the praise for them alone. Diba? Okay na sana. Kinantahan ka na. Ikaw nga ang pinuntahan para kantahan eh. Pero gusto, but Saul wanted the praise all for himself. Why are you praising him as well? And why are you giving him more, more praise? So, so the Bible says the result of this is he was very wroth. He was very angry. So insecurity or fear in your life will always uh, uh, affect you emotionally. Not only emotionally, Saul was very wroth. And the saying displeased him. And he said, they have ascribed unto David ten thousands, and to me, only thousands, only but thousands. And what can he have more but the kingdom? Look at that, a layo ng conclusion niya. Just because these women are singing this about David, you will conclude that David is doing whatever he, he's doing in order to get the kingdom from you? Aren't you delusional? Ang, ang okay mo naman. Kumanta lang sila. Gusto, ang, ang conclusion mo na, ay, kinukuha na ni David yung kingdom sa akin. Ganun agad. That's why insecurity doesn't only affect you emotionally. He was, he was affected emotionally. He was mad. But it also affects his thinking, his rationality. This is not a rational conclusion. Just because you heard a song, an exaggerated song, just because you heard that people are, are happy because of what David did, you're thinking that David is trying to steal the kingdom from me? That, that, that is what fear does in your life. Maybe that is what fear is doing in your life today. Baka na affect na yung ating uh, uh, reasoning, yung ating uh, 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 rationality. Kung ano na lang nakoconclude natin. Hindi naman talaga yun. You know, verse 9 says, and, and Saul eyed David from that day forward. Yari ka sa akin. Not only that, it affected his uh, emotion or, or, or his thinking, it also affected his decision making. Saul said, from this day on, I will do what I can in order to get rid of you. That is what insecurity does. Hindi ako titigal hindi ka nawawala. Hindi ako titigal hanggat hindi ka, hindi kita masisira. Why? Because I don't like you. I don't like you. Uh, I don't like what people think about you. I don't like what people uh, uh, say when they talk about you. I want you destroyed. That's why it affects our decision making. I don't know if you're in that that way. Kung meron kang fear, do you have fear today? You have, do you have uh, insecurities today? If you have that, that's why it's important po in decision making that we find our security in God alone. Why? Only then can we, be, can we trust our decision making. If we're full of fear and insecurity and we know that we're not following the Lord, we cannot trust our decisions. Not, hindi natin kayang pagtubala. Remember, the Bible says, delight yourself also in the Lord and He will give you the desires of thine heart. As long as we are seeking after God, He will be the one to give us that desire. And when God is the one to give the desire, we are confident that that decision is the right decision sa Panginoon. That's why, we, uh, if we are ruled by fear and security, hindi po mag, hindi mo pagkakatiwala yung decision mo. Saul wanted to, the praise for him alone. Saul, Saul wanted everyone to praise him and he's living for people's approval. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 6, not with eye service as men pleasers, but as servants of Christ doing the will of God from the heart. We don't live for the well done of people. We live for the well done of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's it. If you're serving today, you're living your life for the approval of people, you're not going to live a good life. And you're not going to live a life that is well pleasing to the Lord. What did, uh, what did Paul say when people uh, at Corinth were questioning him? 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1-4. to 4. The Bible says, Let a man so account of us as of ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Who's requiring that? It is Christ. It is the Lord. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judge of you. Kung uusgahan niyo ako, wala sa akin yan. Uh, I don't even judge myself. Diba? Or, or, or of man's judgment, yeah, I judge not my own self. I don't even give a lot of uh, uh, weight on what people think of me. I don't even give a lot of weight on what I think of me. Why? Because I'm going to face uh, the Lord someday. Sa kanya ako mag account For I know nothing by myself, yet am I not hereby justified. But he that judgeth me is the Lord. That's why when we live our lives for the approval of men, we're not going to please God. But when we, 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 we keep in mind that we're going, one day we're going to give account to the Lord and the Lord alone, we're going to make decisions for the Lord and for the Lord alone. Ang hirap pong gumawa ang decision na puro tao ang kinoconsider po natin. 
We just consider the glory of God, consider the will of God po sa ating buhay. You know, if, if, if Saul was living today, siya yung tao na, uh, check niya ako ilang friends meron siya. Siya yung tao na, he always checks how many likes he has on his latest post. He always checks how many reacts you have in your story. Yan yung tao insecure. I want men to, uh, to approve. And, and if there's only less than 50 likes in the photo I posted a while ago, I'm going to delete it. I'm going to take another photo. I, I want at least 100 likes. I want people to say that I'm beautiful. I want people to say that I'm handsome. You know, ako nga, sawang-sawa na po ako. Nakita nyo, ewan ko po, nakita nyo yung post ko. Sawang-sawa na po ako doon. Pero yung iba, yun ang gusto nila. Ah, ang pogi mo naman. Ang ganda naman yan. Uh, ang ganda naman ng boses mo. Kaya mo pinost. The reason why you post your special number because you want people to say na ang ganda ng boses mo. Right? People, insecure people. If Saul is living today, I'm sure that's him. Tignan ko. Naalala ko na naman. <laughs> Yung nagpipreach. Ah, teka, teka. Bago tayo magpreach. Oh. Oh, hundred ang viewers natin. Oh. Ano pa yan, ha? Hindi lang yan individual. Pamilya pa yung iba dyan. Oh, eh, times mo pa. Oh, ang dami nanonood sa atin. Diba? Eh, ano naman? May nanonood o wala? Di ba ba? Just if you, why? Are you, are you preaching for the viewers? Or are you preaching for the glory of God? So, uh, uh, these people who are, who are ruled by fear and insecurities, they're looking for the, for the approval of man. Not only that, but Saul's insecurity is seen in private situations. Alam niyo po yung fear and insecurity, it doesn't really show up publicly. It really shows up, ikaw nakakakita, kung paano kang, how you make your decisions. What interest, what's interesting here is, if you consider the chapter, you look at uh, uh, chapter 18, we're going to see here that <clears throat> in the eyes of the public, they don't know what Saul is doing. Why? Because Saul promoted David. Right? Saul took David in in order to be one of his servants. Saul gave him a lot of responsibility. Saul was even offering him his daughters. As matalang public, that is what Saul is doing. But in private, Saul was throwing a javelin. In private, Saul was trying to make a scheme or a plot in order to get David killed. But nobody knows that. That's only Saul. It only shows up privately. In private, Saul cannot stand David. I can't stand this guy. But in public, oh, I'm going to promote him. He's a strong man. Uh, he killed Goliath. He's going to be one of, my, uh, one of my servants. I'm going to give him more responsibilities. I'm going to give him my daughter. Why? Because he's a great man. But in private, papatayin ko to. In private, I'm going to send him to the Philistines in order to get killed. That's why insecurity really shows up uh, in private. But we have to realize that we are who we are in private. Because we all somehow wear a mask in public. Somehow, not everyone knows what we really are. We only, we are only, uh, we only realize who we really are in, uh, uh, in, in private. That's, why, uh, that's what I love about the Bible. Whenever the Bible speaks of the motives and the, uh, uh, and the heart of people, we can trust that it's true. Pagka, you know, worldly books, they can only guess about motivations of people. Uh, kaya lang nilang hulaan na, kaya ginawa nito yun to, siguro ganyan yung nasa isip niya. But when the Bible speaks about the motives of people, we can be sure that that is why, why they really did what they did. Because the Bible uh, gives us a glimpse of what is in the heart of Saul. Saul wanted to get rid of David and whatever he was doing, it was all about getting rid of David. Diba? Kaya nga po, we can trust that the Bible will be the one to reveal our own motives in our hearts as well. The Bible says, Hebrews 4.12, For the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. So let the Bible bring out your real intention. Kahit nga tayo, hindi natin kilala sarili natin. Until the Bible points us out that you have a wrong motive. Until, uh, until we hear a preaching and we realize, mali yung ginagawa ko. Until we read the Bible and we realize, oh, that is not what God wants me to do in, in my life. So, uh, uh, be, because of this, in, in private, um, uh, soul was, yung, yung insecurity in soul is, 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 is showing up. That's why he was trying to mask all of the things, bad things that he, he's doing with the, against David, mask it behind his good intentions. Why? Una, ano sabi niya? Oh, David, I want to give you my wife. Ah, uh, my wife. I want to give you my uh, daughter, uh, my oldest daughter, but I want you to uh, fight the Philistines first. Well, in the first place, David has the right to get the daughter. Why? Because he killed Goliath already. But, but Saul said, okay, I'm going to give you, but 
Go to the Philistines first. But the Bible says in his heart, I don't want to be the one to kill you. I want the Philistines to kill you. So after that, David did, but he gave that daughter to someone else. And then uh, and after that, David, uh, um, Saul said, okay, uh, I, I don't feel well. I'm going to give you the privilege to play for me. But I only want to get you alone in order to throw this javelin at you. And after that, at the end of the chapter, okay, I'm going to give you my other daughter, but go again and fight the Philistines because I want these people to kill you deep inside. Yeah, tinatago niya yung kanya mga ginagawa in, 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 uh, uh, in, in behind good intentions. Sa mata ng tao, ang ganda. Pero sa puso niya, meron talaga siyang gustong gawin kay David. That is what insecurity does sa buhay natin. That is how it behaves. I don't know if you see yourself in that. I don't know if you see someone in that. But I, I, I hope and I pray that we, uh, we find that as well. And look at David very quickly on our staba. 51. We still have a few minutes. Look at David and what principles can we find here uh, in him. First, let's find our security in our God-given relationships. Let's find our security in our God-given relationship. Because as a while ago, we saw that insecurity seeks the approval of everyone else. It seeks the approval of that person commenting on your Facebook page. You, meantime, we find ourselves finding approval from people that don't even know us. Instead of, of, of finding that approval or, 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 that, or, or security on that woman you call your wife. Or, or find that approval or, or, or with your husband. Find that approval with your kids or with your immediate family. We have to realize uh, that we're not living for these people. Kaya nga po, if we are going to find our security, not in God, but in other people, we're never going to find it at all. That's why we have to find our security sa mga tao po na binigay ng Panginoon sa buhay natin. For David, he doesn't care what people say. He has these two people in his life. That's where he finds his security. Let's, let's try to understand that uh, uh, approval circle. First, of course, be approved by God. As long as I am approved by God, I don't care what you say. Okay. Second is be approved by your wife, kung meron kang asawa, by your husband. Just care about what they think of you. Right? Care about what God thinks of you, but then from that, you work your way out. Care about what your, your, your family thinks of you. Care about what your kids think of you. Care about what, what your immediate family thinks of you. That's what matters anyway. Bakit? At the end of the day, hindi naman yung mga tao sa nagko-comment sa Facebook mo ang kasama mo. Ang kasama mo yung iyong family. That's, that is, uh, that's who, uh, those are the people that God gave you and those are the people that we have to, 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 to care about. I'm not saying that we don't care about those people. We just don't care about what they say. Why? Because we care about what God thinks. We care about what people close to us think. Minsan po, mas mabigat pa sa atin yung sinasabi ng mga tao hindi naman tayo kilala. Bakit nga ba ang bigat-bigat ng mga bagay na narinig natin sa mga tao hindi naman tayo kilala? Why? Because deep inside, we have that insecurity. No, meron po tayong insecurity. Uy, sabi ni Anon, taba-taba ako daw. Eh, kung sinabi naman ng asawa mo, okay na. Okay na. Eh, ano naman, paki ko, kung sinabi na ano mataba ako, lagi naman sinasabi ni Jal na mataba talaga ako. Okay na, tanggap ko na po yun. Pero kung, kung, kung para sa kanya, hindi ako okay, sa lahat okay ako, then I'm living a, 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 a very pretentious life. Kaya nga po dapat, we, we find our security in God, we find our security in God-given relationships. Not only that, but looking at what David did throughout all this chapter, all he did was serve Saul, serve Saul, behave himself wisely, behave himself very wisely, behave himself more wisely, do all you can not to seek revenge or vengeance. Do all you can. As long as you can help it, bayaan mo. Diba? Sabi ni, uh, ang, ang, anong ginagawa dito ni David? Threw a javelin at his head. Okay. Destroying his name. Okay. Trying to get him killed against the Philistines. Okay. David continually served and served Saul. Right? Let the Lord fight your battles. Uh, of course, I'm sure, that's the reason why I, I, I say that uh, I'm, I'm not preaching this against uh, 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 whatever my father's doing because I understand completely what he's doing. But in our lives, hanggat kaya mo, let the Lord fight that battle for you. As long as you're not pu- put in that situation where you have to do something, let the Lord do it. Continue serving Him. Our job is to honor God and love people. Continue doing that, whatever happens. The Lord's going to honor that. Not only that, but we saw here in David that we have to remain humble. Nakita niyo gano'ng kasama si Saul, how evil Saul is. But, but when Saul said, I'm going to give you my eldest daughter, ano sabi ni David sa verse 18? David uh, said unto Saul, Who am I? 
And what is my life or my father's family in Israel that I should be son-in-law to you, to the king? Salbahin na nitong taong to ah. Uy, I'm not worthy to be your son-in-law. He remained humble. And even in verse number 23, when Saul, when Saul didn't give that first daughter, and then Saul said to his servants, okay, go to David again, tell him I'm going to give him my other daughter. Kung ako yun, uh, pag ginawa na, okay na, maniniwala na ako. Sinungaling naman yun. But no, David said, no, I'm not even worthy. Again, he said, I don't even have the money for that. I don't have the dowry. And not just, not only that am I poor, but I'm not worthy to be your son-in-law. He remained humble. Hindi po, tanga, hindi po katangahan si, yung ginagawa ni David. Why? Because he knows what God wants him to do. That's what he's focused on. Magsinungaling ka, bahala ka. Pananagutan mo yan sa Panginoon. Tubukan mo akong patayan, bahala ka. Pananagutan mo yan sa Panginoon. All I'm going to do is I'm going to remain humble. Remor, remember, before success is humility. And pride goeth before destruction. Kaya nga po, let's try to remain humble. Whatever is happening, try to remain humble. And as a conclusion this morning, I don't want to take much more of your time. Are we facing uh, someone like Saul today? Or maybe you see yourself somehow, konti, in Saul. You see yourself that, uh, I realize that I'm really insecure. Why? Because I, I have been looking for the approval of people who don't matter. Or maybe you, you, you see that I can't stand a person. And I realized today that the reason why I can't stand that person is because there's something in him that God is doing that God is not doing in me. Lord, please help me create a right spirit within me. Create in me a pure heart. Lord, Lord, work on my heart. I want to be like David, a man after your own heart, a man who's only concerned about your will, a man who's only concerned about what you want. That's what I want as well, Lord. Help me align my heart, Panginoon, sa iyo. Because God can also describe us as a man after God's own heart, despite the failures that we have. Why? Because that's what he said about David. And, and uh, um, I hope that, that uh, somehow any part of this message has been a, a, a challenge to you, a, a blessing to you. Today, be thankful for the people that God has placed in your heart. You know, a lot of people have left our church, but I'm thankful for those who remain. Why? Because I know that no, no matter what happens, these people are still here that they will be the ones to stand with you, they will be the ones to encourage you, and they're, they're, hindi ka nila uutuin, hindi ka nila uh, but they are there in order to be a friend to you. They are there in order to be uh, 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 an encouragement to you. And I even thank God more for my family. Thank God for your wife. Thank God for your husband. Why? Because no matter, kasi kung meron tao nakakilala sa'yo next to God, it's them. But they're still there with you. Right? Why? Because these are people that God placed in your life strategically, almost specifically, for the times that you need them the most. And they're there. What matters is what God thinks. What matters is what they think of you. And that is uh, how we can move on make the right decision. Let us all stand and pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this morning.